Welcome to our new unit on equilibrium. This unit is broken down into two programs, the first one looking at the equilibrium state and the equilibrium constant, and the second on methods of shifting equilibrium. Let's begin with the features of an equilibrium state. First off, let's consider where we begin. Hydrogen and iodine. They collide together, and from that, produ from that produce this particle, hydrogen iodide. If we take this reacting system and put a cork in the top of it, which doesn't then allow the products to escape, it's equally possible that these particles could collide and then cause the reaction to go in the reverse direction. This is one of the necessary features of equilibrium. You must have a closed system that allows both forward and reverse reactions to take place. As the reaction proceeds, eventually you'll reach a happy balance between these two processes, the rate at which you form product and the rate at which the product reforms reactant will match. Let's take a look at how this is going to look on graphs. First off, if we take a look at the concentrations of our products and reactants, we'll find that eventually we'll reach a point in time, say somewhere about here, where there are no apparent changes in the concentrations of the two species. Yet the reaction is still proceeding. We are still making product, and product is turning back into reactant at the same rate. So if we look at a graph of that situation, it would look something like this, where at equilibrium, this point in time here, on this graph, this is where the two rates match each other. So the reaction is still happening, but the properties aren't changing, which brings us to the next point, is at equilibrium, the macroscopic properties remain constant. What that means is if we take a look at, say, a, a bottle of our product here, even though iodine and hydrogen are essentially changing partners throughout, the solution, or at least the mixture, will have a constant color. It might also have constant temperature or even constant um, concentrations. These are what we refer to as the macroscopic or the big picture properties. A final feature of equilibrium is it can be reached from many starting concentrations. What that means is, suppose I change my starting situation. Suppose I have a bottle which begins with just hydrogen iodide in it. If I put those in and allow them to react, I might need to move this one up a bit, I will essentially reach the same concentrations that I reached in my situation up here. So here's a picture of what they look like, starting with only reactants. Here I am starting with products, and yet I finish in exactly the same situation. So these are a few features you need to keep in mind about the equilibrium state. Let's look a little bit more closely now at these concentrations at equilibrium. The equilibrium law states that once you've reached equilibrium, so again, I'm talking about the situation when we're here and beyond. There's a certain ratio that exists between products and reactants. We call this the equilibrium law. Now in general terms, it's the concentration of my products over the concentration of my reactants. However, if I want to be a little bit more specific, for instance, in this case, I could say that the equilibrium constant in this case would be the concentration of hydrogen iodide, my product squared because of this coefficient here, divided by the concentration of hydrogen, to the 1 and iodine to the 1. Now let's use this information to get us these concentrations. So reading this off the graph at this point, well, we're about 0.8 and down here we're at about 0.2 let's say. So that would be 0.8 on top squared divided by 
0.2 times 0.2 on the bottom. And in that case, that comes out to 16. My equilibrium constant for this reaction. So no matter what my starting position, I will always end up with this ratio product and reactant.